very good noon to all of you <clears throat> i hope i am clearly visible and audible right i am niketa and i welcome you to this session most important tdms for cat and other management engines tests right so as i told you uh, yesterday also in the in a short clip we are going to look at some idioms that are high frequency idioms that are commonly used and that that are that are going to be relevant for you you'll come across these idioms in your reading right so if you know their meanings you'll be able to sail through smoothly whatever you are reading right so that's the agenda for today all right let me see some highs hello so that i know you are here okay okay so something is wrong with the chat give me a second okay it's okay i think it will uh, i'll figure this out let let me do one thing let me give you the first question right so that we don't waste our time you attempt the first question meanwhile let me figure out about the chat right so uh the directions for some questions for the first five questions that are going to come on your screen are these you have to find the appropriate idiom for the underlined expression so in a sentence one expression will be underlined a phrase will be underlined you have to find the appropriate idiom matching that phrase okay that fits in the situation so here's your first question for every question i'm going to give you five options because as you know some of your omets such as your um, zat your nmat and mhct they give you five options right so keeping that in mind we also have five options today let's see what you say for this all right so i can see your messages finally right good good morning jatin ketan hi hi sonali good noon thank you ketan thank you for the compliment okay i've got some responses already b pratyush b sonali says e pratyusha says b ujwal says e all right so we are confused between b and e i can see that in the chat box right so let's have a look let's see what our answer should be and as you can see here if i look at the sentence we are talking about something that was a complete surprise and i understand you are saying b and e right see something that happens once in a blue moon see both these idioms have blue in them something that happens once in a blue moon happens rarely it's a rare occurrence that's why we say oh uh, you know you will spot that particular uh, let's say i'm talking about some celestial event itself right uh, that eclipse that particular kind of eclipse happens once in a blue moon such an amazing event that our college hosted happens once in a blue moon that you know rarely does our college host such an amazing event so this is about rarely whereas this is about surprise when something comes as a bolt from the blue it comes as a complete surprise to you so that is why b is more appropriate as compared to e all right now what is a damp squib see all the other options also they are idioms here so tell me what is a damp squib let's see what you say hi pratik okay so see this a damp squib squib is actually a firework that doesn't go off right so uh, we've all have burned such fireworks we've all like uh, lit such fireworks 
in our childhood that didn't quite go off as we wanted them to right so that is a squib such a firework so a damn squib is a situation that turns out to be far less impressive than you imagined it to be so let's say you go to a concert a music concert and you have very high expectations from that concert but the concert turns out to be very okay the singers are uh not singing in rhythm they are not in sync right so such a concert would be a damn squib it will be far less impressive than you imagined it to be right so you can associate it with the diwali fireworks that don't go off and that disappoint you you can associate it with some events that have turned out far less impressive than you thought them to be right bold from the blue complete surprise a field day yes who will tell me the meaning of a field day jatin this powerpoint will be there so this recession will be available in a recorded format for you right and uh, if you want i can share these idioms with you in our telegram group right so you'll have to join our telegram group for that there i can share it in a pdf format for you okay so a field day when someone has a field day they have a, a great time at your expense okay they in fact have an opportunity to make profits or to have success at your expense right so for instance let's say you are a celebrity and you have been caught up in a court case somehow you find yourself embroiled in a controversy you currently a court case is going on so celebrity court cases they get a lot of press coverage isn't it so the newspapers will have a field day you know when your case comes to the court so field day is to have an opportunity for success okay when you find some opportunity at someone else's expense <coughs> a mayor's nest who is a mayor yes there is a proverb called money makes the mayor go i remember this is the first time that i learned the meaning of mayor okay so back in school we were doing these proverbs and there was this proverb that came money makes the mayor go so mayor is a female horse right female horse so money makes the mayor go meant that you know money can actually accomplish work for you accomplish various tasks for you right so it's a, it's similar to money makes the world go round so very similar to that a mayor's nest imagine a mayor making a nest it has to be first of all a very big nest so a complex a difficult situation is called a mayor's nest okay so let's say you take up a project and you later on realize it's a very difficult or complex project so this project can become a mayor's nest for you a complex or difficult situation so what i am doing here is i am trying to associate these idioms with some events some memory and that helps you to remember these idioms for a longer period of time right so this is just like vocabulary just like you know you associate vocabulary words with some person with some event situation and it helps you to remember them same thing we'll do for idioms also right okay now i have some questions uh, preparation of cat uh arch yes if you are in your final year okay so uh when you take admission of course then you should have completed your final year that is the requirement in fact saral sir took an amazing session on this yesterday okay at 1 pm he took a session so the recording of it is available so all your queries such as uh, if i am in the pre final year can i take it if i am in the final year can i take it uh, what if i have a supply all of those he has addressed in that session right so you can watch that okay bachche ujwal e ka matlab hai ki Uh, वो रे कुछ जो रेयरली होता है दैट इज वन दैट समथिंग दैट हैपेंस वंस इन अ ब्लू मून सो फॉर इंस्टेंस माय फेवरेट स्टार कॉल्स मी वंस इन अ ब्लू मून दैट वुड बी अ करेक्ट सेंटेंस राइट माय फेवरेट स्टार कॉल्स मी वंस इन अ ब्लू मून वेयर इज दिस सेंटेंस इज अ वीडियो कॉल फ्रॉम माय फेवरेट फिल्म स्टार ऑन माय बर्थडे सो दैट वाज नॉट रेयरली you can see substitute rarely here can you substitute substitute rarely 
you can't right whereas you can substitute was a bolt from the blue so was once in a blue moon so once in a blue moon is something that happens at intervals but it happens very rarely okay whereas this is something that happened just once and it took you by surprise right so that is why e nahi ho sakta hope this is clear c ka meaning a field day a field day is when you have an opportunity for success when you have a great time or an opportunity for success okay at someone's expense at someone else's expense by expense here i mean that uh, it is a disadvantageous situation for the other person right chalo i hope this is clear let's go to the second question now again a phrase has been underlined here a duplicate of tell me which idiomatic expression fits here let's see what you say ujwal says d virendra says b okay pratyusha says d pratyush says b Jatin B, all right. Okay, you have an option E also, which says both B and D. So, any chance that it's E? Okay, so the answer here is E, both B and D. A doppelganger. or a dead ringer it means a duplicate an exact replica right so this is the i mean these are the two words right a dead ringer this idiom it comes from horse racing okay and in fact so in horse racing you know some people bet on horses right so if let's say a person has bet on a particular horse many people have bet on a horse and this horse falls ill so what the horse owners used to do they would replace that horse with an exact same horse exact exactly same looking horse of course right so that horse was called a dead ringer right so a dead ringer comes from horse racing or rather horse betting racing mein jo betting hota hai usse aata hai and it means exact replica just like doppelganger so e is our answer okay all right welcome akshay welcome good to know this and it's always a pleasure so uh good those who said b d actually the answer is e okay hope you'll remember both these idioms now what does uh, this mean on tenter hooks if you keep someone on tenter hooks if someone is on tenter hooks they are under a lot of suspense so let's say your board results your cbsc board results imagine a few moments before that you are on tenter hooks right you are in a state of suspense because of the uncertainty of the whole situation right so in a state of suspense on tenter hooks okay and ananias okay so ananias i think the pronunciation is very weird actually and ananias ananias who is this person it's act, it is actually the name of a person ananias it's a character in bible yes it's a character in bible so this person was killed he was punished because he was a habitual liar okay and ananias so somebody who is a habitual liar is called an ananias so of course it does not fit here here we are talking about a copy or duplicate of something right but you can remember this the next time you want to call someone a habitual liar right 
you can call them an Ananias. Also, um, a word for someone who does something habitually, okay, can't be reformed, is incorrigible. Incorrigible. Okay. Inveterate. These are two words. So, somebody who is an incorrigible liar, that means, झूठ ही बोलता रहता है हमेशा हैबिट ही हो गई है कांट बी रिफॉर्म्ड राइट अगेन इनवेटरेट सेम मीनिंग दैट दिस पर्सन इज इट्स सो इनग्रेन्ड दिस हैबिट ऑफ लाइंग इज सो इनग्रेन्ड इन हिम दैट इट इज अनलाइकली टू चेंज सो इनकोरेजेबल एंड इनवेटरेट राइट दीज आर टू वोकैबलरी वर्ड्स फॉर यू टू डिस्क्राइब समवन हु डस समथिंग बैड हैबिचुअली ओके ऑल राइट ऑन टेंडर हुक्स एज आई सेड इन अ स्टेट ऑफ सस्पेंस ऑल राइट Let's have a look at the next question now. Question three. So, what do you say? He talks nonsense. So, what does he do? Yes, Ujwal. Very rightly pointed out. Dono word power mein mujhe bhi wahi se yaad hai. Let's see. A E all right, okay. So A versus I, but mostly I see A is in the chat box. Let's have a look as to what the answer is. ठीक, let's go. So uh, talks through his hat, talks everyone's ears off. If someone talks everyone's ears off, they talk a lot for a long time and usually loudly. There are such people no, who are very loud and they keep on talking. They just can't stop. They are loquacious. They are garrulous as we call them. Right. They prate. Right. So, uh, the point is that here, talking everyone's ears off. In fact, I should not say prate here. I'll tell you why. This is about the fact that you talk for a long time. You talk for a long time. And loudly and usually loudly. Whereas talking through your hat has this exact meaning of talking nonsense. That means what you are saying does not make sense. So very close options these two but A is any day better. Because here it simply is about talking for a long time and talking loudly whereas this is particularly an idiom about talking nonsense. Hence A. Right? Let's have a look at B, C and D. Let's see their meanings also. To bark up the wrong tree. Okay. So imagine. Again. Let's, let's, let me tell you the story behind it. So earlier when kings used to go for hunting. They used to take dogs along with them. Right. Why? Because dogs have a very keen sense of smell. A very sharp sense of smell. So what the dog used to do. The dog would smell. Keep on you know scenting. In the forest, the dog would keep on scenting various trees in order to tell its master, okay, this is from where the animal has passed. This is the place from where the animal has passed. Now, sometimes uh, what happened was that deliberately on purpose, some animals in order to deceive the uh, hunter, they would leave their scent on a particular path, but then go on another path, right? They would do that sometimes. So, as a result, when the dog came later on, the dog would bark up the wrong tree. 
the dog would smell the wrong tree and would bark up the wrong tree meaning would actually show the wrong tree so this is where this idiom comes from to bark up the wrong tree it means that you know when you are trying to solve a problem but your uh, root is wrong okay your emphasis is wrong that is when you are barking up the wrong tree so so for instance if let's say i talk about a mathematical problem she thinks that this problem can be solved through differentiation but i think she is barking up the wrong tree this can be solved only through integration let's say just an example okay or she thinks that so and so method will work for uh, this particular uh, accounting problem but i think she is barking up the wrong tree and we should follow the other method instead so this is how you use this idiom i hope you'll remember this story right barking up the wrong tree and let's come to c it's a very visual idiom like a cat on a hot tin like a cat on hot bricks or like a cat on a hot tin roof that is also something that is used like a cat on a hot tin roof imagine a cat on a hot tin roof or on hot bricks would the cat be comfortable no right so like a cat on hot bricks or like a cat on a hot tin roof means somebody who is very awkward very uncomfortable in fact unhappy also because of the situation that they are in right so for instance let's say you are an introvert and uh, somehow your friend takes you to a party okay where you find very loud people so in that party you will be like a cat on a hot tin roof like a cat on hot bricks right okay correct virendra aptly summarized uh, barks up the wrong tree is having a wrong approach or method let's have a look at d shows a clean pair of heels if someone shows you a clean pair of heels what do they do they run away from you very quickly to show someone a clean pair of heels is to run very quickly okay so for instance a thief could do this i was about to catch the thief but he showed me a clean pair of heels he ran away so a good way as i said to learn idioms is one association now this association could happen by relating it to your life your life event people in your life right i am sure there must be one person in your life who talks everyone's ears off right so one that is one method second is learning their origin so for instance i told you that dead ringer comes from horse racing betting on horses this one talk bark up the wrong tree this comes from actually dogs scenting the tree and talking about the trail on which an animal has gone so the stories also help you remember an idiom the origins also help you remember an idiom a very interesting source that i would like to suggest to you is a website called phrases.org.uk okay phrases.org.uk has a list a huge huge list of idioms and phrases and even proverbs and it has categorized idioms okay it has made a very interesting categorization so for instance it has categorized idioms by animals so you'll find all the animal related idioms in one place then by color you'll find all the color related idioms in one place so you can explore this source a very interesting one okay perfect so i hope this is clear to you all these idioms let's go to the next one question 4 what do you say let's see what you say okay i've got some responses okay e b all right what else that's it so those who are saying e you think that a and d both fit right 
ओके लेट्स हैव अ लुक एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट बोथ फिट द वर्ल्ड हैज द वर्ल्ड टुडे हैज बीन थ्रोन आउट ऑफ गियर ओके द वर्ल्ड टुडे हैज बीन थ्रोन आउट ऑफ गियर बिकॉज़ ऑफ द पेंडेमिक आई थिंक दिस इज वेरी इजी टू अंडरस्टैंड uh imagine when your car is not in the right gear what would happen right so it will be an unpleasant situation for sure an uncomfortable unpleasant situation so that is when when things stop functioning normally we say they have been thrown out of gear right so in a way malfunctioning let me put it in one word malfunctioning okay S- to swallow a bitter pill when you know the situation is pretty unpleasant but you have to accept it you have no other choice right that is when you swallow a bitter pill so the world today is has been thrown out of gear and it is swallowing a bitter pill both are correct in this context right in both the cases the situation is unpleasant and here it must be accepted also so e is the answer both the idioms fit right now let's have a look at b and c the fact that a and d fit a and d both fit does not mean that they can be used as substitutes of each other nahi dono idioms different hai we can't use them as substitutes it's just that in this context both of them fit right in the context of an unpleasant situation when someone harps on the same string you know i associate some idioms with my mother tongue i think you should also do that it's a very interesting way to uh, again remember idioms so i i know that in hindi there is this idiom called ek hi raag alapta rehta hai wo to right when i say that ki koi ek hi raag alap alap raha hai that means this person is harping on the same string this person is talking about the same subject okay it's he's is not changing the topic dwelling on the same thing right so when you dwell dwell means to focus on something at length on the same subject that is when you harp on the same string right ek hi raag alapna like fish out of water is a synonym it's a synonymous idiom to like cat on a hot tin roof like a cat on a hot tin roof these are two synonymous idioms if you're like a fish out of water again you'll be awkward uncomfortable if you're like a cat on a hot tin roof again you'll be uncomfortable right so both you can associate with each other okay so a and d were our answers here all right yes sonali i also learned it from my mother only right okay question 5 yes to face the risk these are easy idioms i think a hard nut to crack okay and uh, <clears throat> sorry to bear the brunt you must have heard these idioms right so let's see what you say here students have to face the risk in order to attain success in the civil services exams right so what do they have to do okay you say a hard nut to crack okay probably you associated it with cracking the exam all right vidhan says it's to bell the cat all right to nip the devil in the bud you must have heard this to nip the evil in the bud to nip the devil in the bud what does this mean does this fit okay you say no it's d most of you say it's d all right so one of you is correct it is to bell the cat okay now we in fact in cat preparation we use it in a punny manner right we use it as a pun uh when we say that you have to bell the cat exam right so to bell the cat in fact there is a whole story around this that who will bell the cat so uh there's this uh, group of mouse a uh, group of uh, mice who live in a particular place and a cat comes there and slowly starts eating the mice right so all these mice gather they meet and they think okay what should be done so as to stop this so as to alert ourselves so one of the mice suggests that you know we should tie a bell 
around the cat's neck so that whenever she is approaching we get to know right but then the million dollar question is who is going to bell the cat right who is going to do that hardest task right uh, that uh, risky task so uh, and you know there is i have heard the story in english also i have heard the story in hindi also ki billi ke gale mein ghanti kon baandhe right so to bell the cat is to do something that's highly risky to face the risk and that's why we also use it for the exam cat to bell the cat right so i hope uh, you will remember this now just associate it with your exam and you will not forget it you can associate of course you can remember it through the story also okay to nip the evil in the bud to nip the evil in the bud is when you see before the evil grows before the problem grows you nip it you stop it right in its tracks right so to stop something immediately before the problem becomes worse is to nip the evil in the bud right so for instance let's say you've spilled something on on the table right and it's gradually spreading on the table it's about to fall off the table now right it's about to spill over on the onto the floor also so if you clean it before that you have nipped the evil in the bud right it happens a lot with me that's why i associate it with that to nip the evil in the bud so to stop a problem before it becomes worse to take one to task yes all of us use it use this slang when we say aaj to iski class lagegi right aaj to main iski class lagati hu yes we use this so class lagana kisi ki is to take one to task when you take one to task you scold them you criticize them you make them realize that they've done something bad right they've done something wrong that is to take one to task are you there with me everyone to bell the cat samajh nahi aaya to bell the cat means to do a task that is very risky imagine you are a mouse and someone tells you go tie a bell around a cat's neck is that an easy task for a mouse doesn't the mouse risk being eaten right so to when you when you are given such a difficult task that involves a lot of risk that is when you are asked to bell the cat right yes correct virendra all right so let's come to a hard nut to crack many of you thought that this is the answer when someone or something is a hard nut to crack right if i say you know this person is a hard nut to crack that means this person is very difficult to deal with there are some people no who are not easy they are not easy going so this person is difficult to deal with and this person is difficult to influence right so for instance during police investigations this is a term that you know can be used during police investigations there are people who crack under pressure people who easily crack under pressure right criminals who admit to their crime immediately but there are people who prove difficult to crack right such people for such people for such criminals i can use this term that he or she is a hard nut to crack right difficult to influence difficult to get something out of difficult to deal with theek hai all right and what does it mean to bear the brunt of something when you bear the brunt of let's say uh, you are a manager your subordinates do something wrong and you have to bear the brunt so you actually bear the chief impact of it the main impact of it you bear right so to bear the main impact of something negative is to bear the brunt if let's say an accident happens okay and uh, uh, it's it's an accident between a car and an auto and it's the car that is majorly damaged so we will say that the car bore the brunt of the accident right yes correct virendra belling the tiger for human beings similarly is to belling the cat for a mouse yes so i hope this is clear to you to bell the cat was the answer here to nip the evil in the bud to take one to task a hard nut to crack to bear the brunt so with every question our endeavor is to learn five idioms right that's what we are doing today okay now you have some fill in the blank questions now right so here's the question 
and these are five idioms one of them fits in the blank tell me which one does take the help of the context very similar idioms let's see what you say okay All right. So I've got one D so far. What else? Okay, so I've got D, all right. So uh, all of you believe that it should be square his shoulders. But okay, what does this action indicate when I let's say square my shoulders? You know, this is squaring of shoulders. So when you stand straight with your shoulders pulled back, that is squaring your shoulders. Does that indicate that uh, you have done something that was quite impossible? Yes, that appeared to be impossible. Does that mean that? Yes. So, I don't think that squared his shoulders is an indicator of your achieving something that was considered to be extremely difficult. Squaring your shoulders is rather a sign that you are ready to do something, ready to deal with something, right? So, when you are ready to compete, to fight, to argue, that is when we use that he squared his shoulders, right? So, ready to enter a contest, ready to compete. Let me put it this way. Now, this person has won the highest medal in such a difficult sport. So, this person has done pretty much what was considered impossible. So, to try to do the impossible, this person has squared the circle. Right? This person has squared the circle. Imagine, can somebody square a circle? Seems like impossible, right? So, that is why this idiom. Now, uh, is this an idiom square a peg in a round hole? square a peg in a round hole or a square peg in a round hole it is a square peg in a round hole so this is distorted here the idiom is a square peg in a round hole okay peg here uh, it means a block of wood okay so imagine a square block of wood that you're trying to fit in a round hole Will it fit in a round hole? So, someone who is a misfit in a particular situation. Someone who does not fit in a particular situation is a square peg in a round hole. So, again, remember that introvert who was taken to a party by his or her friend, right? So, that introvert would feel like a square peg in a round hole in that party. That introvert will be like a cat on a hot tin roof because she will be extremely uh, awkward and unhappy. She will be like a fish out of water. She will also not fit in the party. So, she will be like a square peg in a round hole. This is distorted here. Okay, this is not how we write this idiom. When someone dots their eyes and crosses their T's, to dot your eyes and cross your T's, it means to do a very thorough and meticulous job. Okay, so when you are very thorough and meticulous about the work that you do, that, that's when you dot your eyes and cross your T's. So, let's say you, I give you a project and uh, you really work hard on it. Your thoroughness shows. So, I'll tell you, oh, you have dotted all your I's and crossed all your T's in this project. That means, kuch minor sabi nahi choda. Har I ke upar dot hai, har T mein cross hai. That's the idea, okay? That's the origin. Okay. So, the answer is C here. And what about this? Squared it with his opponents. Square it with your opponents. Is there an idiom like that? To square it with your opponents. Or is it to square off? Yes. 
so uh, the idiom actually is to square off so again when you square off you um, prepare to fight you prepare to compete that is square off in finance squaring off has a different meaning so first is to prepare to fight in finance the idiom square off it has a different meaning it means to uh, wind up the position that you took so for instance if i bought some shares in the morning right and i sell them in the afternoon i have squared off my position right okay then to square something with somebody is this an idiom to square something with somebody so he squared it with his opponents so basically when you square something with somebody you uh, try to compare okay so try to combine them with each other you basically try to agree right so uh, you try to up make the two ideas consistent so for instance uh, when i say you are doing such a bad task here right how can you really square it with your conscience so i'm i'm telling you that how can you actually make it agree with your conscience how can you make it consistent with your conscience apne aap ko kaise justify kar pa rahe ho ye so that is to square something with somebody it does not fit at all in this situation you're not agreeing with your opponents you're not making something consistent with your opponents hope this is clear yes so this was a tricky question because all your i mean these four of your idioms they all started with squared so they were all similar idioms so you can actually this is one way to approach idioms learning all the idioms related to one word together right so to square the circle to square your shoulders to square it with someone to square it with something or and a square peg in a round hole all right okay okay perfect chalo sabko clear so far so good let's have a look at the seventh question here let's see what you say as soon as the war was announced her investments what happened to them sank their teeth into her sound so deadly yes C E I have got and Vidhan says it took a nose dive so E Jatin says no it's C okay so I understand that these can appear close to you took the plunge and took a nose dive they can appear close to you but answer to ek hi hai when you take the plunge you take a risk right so you take a risk so you took take a leap of faith. in fact a uh, related idiom is to take a leap of faith so here her investments are not taking a risk they are not taking a leap of faith they are not trusting someone and uh, let's say deciding to spend the rest of their life with them you know for marriage also we use this idiom taking the plunge so uh, no this is not the answer took a nose dive that means they went south when a plane takes a nose dive what happens the plane goes south the plane is about to crash right so her investments took a nose dive her investments their value the market value suddenly fell that's what i want to say right so this is what happened actually with people's investments when the russia ukraine war was announced okay uh, took a back seat no when something takes a back seat in your life that means it's no longer a priority for you 
right so for instance uh, i could say that uh, with all the work that i'm doing my badminton practice has taken a back seat right so that means it's no longer a priority for me b sank their teeth into her does not make sense in this context context at all when you sink your teeth into something sink your teeth into something you become highly involved into it okay so let's say now i decide to resume my badminton practice sessions so that's when i will uh, and if i become very involved in it i will sink my teeth into them that's how we use this idiom right so you become and in fact you know it's used uh, uh, not just to get physically involved in something but for instance let's say someone is telling you a story and you become really engrossed in that story so for that also you could say that you know it was the kind of story that you could sink your teeth into that you could get really involved with really involved in right so it can be used metaphorically also that okay to go out on a limb when someone goes out on a limb for you what happens back seat is not the answer no investments took a back seat would mean uh, that her investments uh, as in you know i needed to have more context for this to be the answer let's say so as soon as the war was announced she decided not to invest in the stock market for a while and so her investments uh, or let's say these decisions took a back seat for her her investment plan took a back seat for her so she started doing something else right then it could have fitted but here what i'm trying to show is i'm trying to show a negative event so what will be the impact of that negative event on her investments the impact will be that they will decrease in value so e is the one that directly fits with this okay or we could have said this as soon as the war was announced her plans to go to the warring one of the warring countries took a back seat this will fit because now the plans of course will no longer be a priority for her they'll go into the background so in this context it is in a financial sense it is took a nose dive that fits okay when you go out on a limb you say something that is not a popular opinion okay so for instance sometimes we see this in politics that people do criticize their own parties yes so that's when they are going out on a limb right because they are giving an opinion that will be considered an unpopular opinion that will not be liked by their party right that is what it means to go out on a limb happens a lot in politics so you can associate it with that yes our investments fell sharply correct correct so the answer is e here hope this makes sense all the idioms that we've done so far are clear to you yes let's have a look at the last question for the day again five idioms let's see what you say here chalo let's have a look the authors have claimed that some of the criticism it has received just a second the book uh i should have clarified this what does it mean it means a book yes so i've corrected this okay pratyush says a ujwal says d all right vedant says straw man when something is the last straw i think you must have heard this one you know that was the last straw she was never able to recover from that blow so the last straw is sort of a last blow a final blow sort of why so let's say some bad things have been happening to you in a series 
so when there could be this one thing let's say in a series of bad things that can then make you very angry or upset so that last thing that finally you know is your undoing that makes you very angry or upset is the last straw the final blow right so the authors have claimed that some of the criticism their book has received consists of dash arguments so of course last straw does not fit here okay then how about bricks without straw can you okay so bricks uh, uh, you know how they are made they do require uh, some raw material okay so straws are also required in making of bricks there are different methods ek method mein straws required hote hain so can you make bricks without straw no right so when you make bricks without straw as an idiom it means that you are performing a task when you don't have the necessary resources okay when you don't have the essential materials for carrying out the task so let's say you are given a project but you're given a very low budget on that project in a company so it's like being given to you know being given uh, you are being asked to make big bricks without straw right so making bricks without straw let me add make here so that you remember this again it does not fit here we are talking about arguments contradictions logic okay so let me see any other responses that i have got a okay quite a few of you have said a now a is the answer what kind of arguments are straw man arguments yes straw man argument so it is a type of logical fallacy in fact right um, logical fallacies are basically a way of arguing that is logically flawed that's what we call a logical fallacy right so to give you an example if i say that you know um robberies have increased in the neighborhood so we should install these cameras right cctv cameras and uh, let's say another person rises you when you say this this is this is being said in an rwa meeting residents welfare association meeting and another person rises and says so are you trying to say you don't trust your neighbors so this is a straw man argument you never said that you don't trust your neighbors you talked about installing cctv cameras because robberies had increased in the neighborhood okay so now this person did not have any counter to it so this person uh, you know instead of uh, addressing the real issue made up this misrepresented misinterpreted your argument deliberately and brought up this that are you saying that you don't trust your neighbors such argument are called such you know arguments are called straw man arguments they don't fight the your real contention right your real argument but then they distort it so as to um, keep you caught up in an argument hope this makes sense sanji hello yes straw man is a man made of straws actually imagine a man made of straws this person is not a real man right so actually a straw man is a man who lacks any integrity okay if i just look at this phrase straw man a person lacking integrity is called a straw man so similarly this argument here are you saying that you don't trust your neighbors it lacks integrity a straw man argument <coughs> acha a straw in the wind <coughs> sorry what is a straw in the wind yes कब यूज करते हैं हम उसको कैसे यूज करते हैं विंड में एक स्ट्रॉ इमेजिन सो समटाइम्स यू नो यू आर यू कैन एक्चुअली विजुअलाइज इडियम्स यू कैन डिसाइफर देन मीनिंग बट समटाइम्स यू मे नॉट बी एबल टू सो दैट्स वाई वी शुड नॉट रिलाय ऑन ब्रेकिंग डाउन इन इडियम यूजिंग द वर्ड्स राइट दिस इज जस्ट माई ट्राइंग टू मेक यू एसोसिएट इडियम्स विथ थिंग्स सो वेन समथिंग इज इन द विंड right when we say that something is in the wind that means it acts as a hint that something is about to happen okay so straw in the wind is a hint of future developments right so the minister's words yesterday are a straw in the wind that means they are hinting that something momentous is probably going to happen so now you know what a last straw is a final blow bricks without straw making something without essential materials straw man argument a sort of a flawed silly argument presented as a counter because your original argument is logically sound and therefore it's difficult to defeat right and what about a short straw anji what will be a short straw
ओके शॉर्ट स्ट्रो हाउ वॉट इज इट शॉर्ट ऑफ सो इट इज नॉट यूज लाइक दिस जस्ट यू नो शॉर्ट स्ट्रो इज नॉट द इडियम द इडियम इज टू ड्रॉ द शॉर्ट स्ट्रो ओके इट कम्स फ्रॉम कार्ड्स प्लेइंग कार्ड्स सो वेन यू ड्रॉ द शॉर्ट स्ट्रॉ बेसिकली यू ड्रॉन द अनलकीएस्ट सेट ऑफ कार्ड्स राइट सो इट इज ऑल्सो यूज फॉर अदर थिंग्स सो वेन यू ड्रॉ द शॉर्ट स्ट्रॉ लेट से यू एंड योर फ्रेंड्स आर गिवन अ टास्क ऑल ऑफ यू एंड यू गेट द मोस्ट अनप्लेजेंट पार्ट ऑफ द टास्क दैट्स वेन यू हैव ड्रॉन द शॉर्ट स्ट्रॉ राइट आपको in a way let's say you are you all of you are having one drink together and you are given the shortest straw just associated with that so you are given the most unpleasant task in a particular situation the unluckiest you are the unluckiest out of a group of people theek hai so to be the unluckiest particularly in an unpleasant task so i hope all of these are clear to you we have learned 40 new idioms today right and you will remember these idioms uh, okay all right all right no it's uh, straw in the wind is not about going with the direction of the wind no 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 okay i hope these are clear to you any queries please ask we have time and yes these are our cat 22 toppers you can see them you can be here next year and to be here next year you can join our course right cat 23 comprehensive program the link for this is in the description box uh, again we have a lot of features in this for you material expert guidance recorded lectures live lectures so you can explore this more to make this accessible for you we also have a scholarship program so those who perform well in our scholarship tests so the next one is going to happen on 14th at 11 am they get they can get up to a 90% scholarship depends on how well you perform right and yes in case uh, in fact all of you should attend it 6 uh, months to cat 23 what your strategy should be so on 21st may at 11 am join gautam baba sir you have to register for this workshop in advance as there are limited seats that are available right so i think all of you should go for it it will help you devise a 6 month road road map for you okay also if you want to practice more quizzes you want to practice more vocabulary more idioms etc then you can join our app right and on our app you will find this in the practice tab so just download the app and in the practice tab you will find these daily quizzes straw man ka meaning okay a uh, straw man argument okay first of all just a straw man is somebody who is uh, who lacks integrity yes a straw man is similar to a scarecrow very well you know you made the relationship well so just like a scarecrow is not a real person this person is there only to scare the birds right similarly a straw man is not a real person this this has been planted at a particular place only to distract people right so straw man argument is an argument meant to distract उसका जॉब क्या है डिस्ट्रैक्ट करना फ्रॉम द रियल इशू राइट सो दैट सॉर्ट ऑफ एन आर्ग्यूमेंट इज अ स्ट्रॉन्ग एंड आर्ग्यूमेंट क्लियर उज्जवल ओके यस श्योर जतिन फॉर दैट यू हैव टू जॉइन द टेलीग्राम ग्रुप आई गिव यू द आई थिंक द एड्रेस फॉर इट इज देयर इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स अगेन ओके ऑल्सो द सीरीज हैज बीन गोइंग ऑन दोज ऑफ यू आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर कैट सो इट्स एन ऑन गोइंग सीरीज इट विल गो ऑन टिल कैट सो डू कीप जॉइनिंग अस इन द सीरीज फाइव हंड्रेड मोस्ट एक्सपेक्टेड कैट क्वेश्चन okay and as i said this is the telegram channel so you can join this i'll share the pdf for this session there right and i'll also share some extra questions for you okay all right so yes do subscribe to the channel i'm sure you have that's how you are able to participate in the chat and uh, we are also there on social media platforms you can download the app we also conduct more such se more sessions there so for instance today in the evening at 7 pm i have a grammar booster session there where i'll talk to you about some aspects of grammar some parts of speech right so do join me all right this is it from my side welcome guys welcome i'll see you next time bye bye and i'll share the pdf welcome welcome jatin glad you liked it bye